Today we're going to get the brand new Chromecast with Google TV opened up and show you what's inside, show you how to set it up the simplest way, and then walk you through a number of the different things you're going to want with this. Now, as you open up the box, what's incredible is how well packaged this is. There's a couple of boxes in there. You can see the Chromecast itself and the remote, plus you get a manual and a USB-C cable batteries and the physical adapter, the USB adapter that will plug into the wall. Now that USB-C cable will go into the Chromecast itself and there are three colors. I bought the snow one, so this is just the white color. There's a little bit of flexibility in the HDMI connector from the actual dongle itself and then you have a factory reset button on the back of the Chromecast. The remote comes out of the packaging just as smooth and easily as the rest of it. The buttons are great, they feel wonderful and you you really don't have any miss presses when you're using this remote. There's also volume buttons on the side. Now it does take two AAA batteries, but you get a couple from Google and they're color coded to your device. Once you slip in the batteries and close it up, you'll notice the little light on the front that is ready to pair to the Chromecast. Now what we have to do is get that USB-C ending plugged into our Chromecast and then we have to plug in the USB connector into our power adapter. Now you can use other power adapters but make sure that the power is correct. Then you take the HDMI connector, plug it into the HDMI slot you'd like on the back of your TV and of course plug in the power adapter and you've started the setup process. You might have to switch to the input on your TV and I'm showing you that I actually had to pair my remote but most of the time yours will just pair automatically. I actually did a factory reset to show you this so that's why it's asking me to pair. Now you're going to choose your language but I'm going to recommend if you speak English choose English United States it will give you access to a few more features. Now I'm going to set this up on the TV but you could do this in the Google Home application. I will tell you right away, makes it a little tougher to type in on the TV than the app. Now, you have to choose your Wi-Fi and put in your Wi-Fi password, and then you are going to be connected. Then you have to log into your Google account. So this is the part that's actually much harder if you're trying to do this on the TV entirely. But once you've done that, you're now going to accept the terms and conditions. Now, there's a couple of things you have to accept privacy policies, things like that. And I tried to turn off the location, but they actually say, you know what, many of the apps use that. But I did turn off the help improve Chromecast because that is sending some data out of your system. And I just wanna keep traffic as low as I can. So once you've accepted that, now you're going through the Google Assistant setup process. And you want to allow the ability to search across all of your TV applications because then when you use the voice remote to search, you get a lot more out of that. Now, voice match is very useful because you can use personal results, which is calendars, reminders, and more things tended towards you specifically. Next up is to select some apps to download or the different services you use for streaming. So I turned on Crave here in Canada, CBC again in Canada, YouTube Music, and you always get YouTube, Netflix, and Disney Plus if they're already connected to your Google Home account like they are in mine. The next thing we're going to do is set up the remote to control the volume and power on our TV. Now, whether you have a TV soundbar or an AV receiver, you have to choose that, and then you have to say what the brand is. Now, I'm just choosing my TV, and we get a little music. So clearly this did work for me, so I hit yes, and next we're setting up the power button. So I hit that, and now because I've chosen a Panasonic TV, it tried to turn off the TV, but it didn't work, so I'm choosing no. 
and then it changes to another profile basically and gives you the chance to try again. It did work for me this time, so I'm choosing yes. Now, my Chromecast remote is set up to control the volume and my TV, and so it's installing the applications and we're actually done the installation process. So you can go through the menu, you have the movies and the shows and the apps as well as a library so you have a wish list or a watch list on there and then you will have the different movies and shows and you can go through all of this including the search button on your own but what you're going to see right away is that there's ratings on most of the content and you can see those ratings and then choose based on your preferences. You can also go directly into apps and Netflix is already in my Google Home application. It's already connected there so I didn't have to type in a password. You might have to. You can choose your profile and then you're ready to go in and start watching content and of course you can go between different apps but if you didn't have the login credentials already put in you're going to have to sign in so I'm just showing you here on Crave you also have things like YouTube and I went into YouTube music and you can choose an account and I'll show you how to add additional accounts but then it starts music of course, you can search within here and you can look for all kinds of different videos because YouTube Music is actually really just YouTube at this point and they're really the same application. Now, of course, you can go through all these different sections, but the next thing you want to look at is getting some additional apps. So let me show you a few that I have already and do really great with this system. Now, Rush Rally 3 cost me $9 here in Canada to get. You can hit install and then it wants you to connect connect a gamepad in order to play it. But just so you know, this is a really powerful system for playing games and this is how good it can look. No, I can't drive, but maybe you'll do a little better. The next thing is called Downloader and you wanna download this, install this in order to sideload applications. So if there's something you're not finding, you wanna get that. Send files to TV is great, you get that on your phone and you can send things like ROMs for video games for a service like RetroArch, which allows you to play older games. Now, Steam Link is another great application if you have Steam on your PC, but here's Retro Arch working with Super Metroid and again I'm using a gamepad to do that and I'll show you that in a minute. Now you can also search for apps and one of the ones you might want is called Google Duo. Now if you don't have a camera already installed you're not going to be able to do a ton with Google Duo but once you have a webcam installed then you're going to be able to make video and audio calls to people. I'm going to link a video that Tech with Brett did that shows you how to do that down below. Now the next thing is the settings screen and there's a ton of settings that we can walk through here and because I set it up in the on the TV not in the Google Home app I never named the device so I had to do that. The next thing you can do is change your network and internet settings so if you changed your Wi-Fi you can come in here and adjust that. This is where you can add additional Google accounts so that when you go into apps like YouTube, you can switch between them. The privacy section is one of the biggest sections in your settings and you can adjust your location settings. So if you did wanna turn that off, here's where you can come and then you can see a couple of apps. The usage and diagnostics section is where you can turn that off if you did leave that on before or turn it back on if you wanna help. Ads allows you to manage some of the personalized settings around the ads you see on here. And Google Assistant has a whole view permission section and a safe search filter for you. You can also obviously block the offensive words and you can also adjust which apps become searchable with the Google Assistant and then turn on and off personal results as well. Purchase authentication is an interesting thing because most of the time you think you want to do it with a password, but my password's really complicated. So I turned on the pin ability and it caused me to put in my password one more time. But then every time I want to purchase something, now I just have to put in a pin. 
The next section is app permissions, and this is just like every Android tablet or phone that you've had. You can see the different apps that have permissions to do different things on this system. So we allowed Duo to access our camera, and I could turn that on and off if I'd like. There's also some special usage and special access features here that you can walk through if you want to see what different apps can do different things. Now the security and restriction section is interesting because right now you can't really do anything in here but you can see that downloader app and this is how you get to sideload now. So we can't do anything because we've got to go and enable the developer mode. So I go into system and I go into about and then I scroll all the way down to this section and I just start tapping the OK button or the enter button and it enables developer mode and once I've done that that, I go back to that section or that setting section that we were just in inside of privacy and what you'll notice is that we can choose unknown sources and we can choose that downloader app to be able to install unknown apps and now you can use that application to sideload. Now back to our main settings, we can look into display and sound and HDMI CEC allows you to turn on and off and change inputs with your remote or with the Chromecast in general. You want to turn that on and make sure your TV setting has that as well. You can match the contents dynamic range, which is just a setting about how it displays. And then you have some advanced display settings allowing game mode kind of turns on a low latency mode. So you can turn that on or you can change the resolution. But I would just in general leave these settings if you're not experiencing problems. But I did turn on that game mode so it's it's low latency when we're playing games. I can turn off system sound so I'm no longer getting those little clicks and I can also adjust the sound settings on an advanced format here or an advanced section and what you're going to notice in here is if you go to manual then you can look into some of these unsupported formats but Google's telling you right here your system's not able to deal with this so that's based on your TV and a couple of things. If it's not what you're expecting with your setup, then you might want to talk to Google support about that one. Back to the apps section here and what you can do is go through the different apps and the different things you can do. So if you wanted to open, force stop or uninstall and then look at the storage usage, you can do all of those things here including seeing the permissions and the ability to notify. Now some things that are really useful in here is that force stop and the ability to uninstall applications. Force stop is kind of if something is misbehaving. Now the system section, we've already been through a little bit because we enabled developer mode, but there's a lot of accessibility options that are very useful so you can get things like captions and adjust how the captions look and feel. And you can also do things like turn on text to speech so you're able to hear what the text is on the screen or as you move throughout the interface. The about section we were already in, you can check for a system update and you can change the device name and you can do a factory reset. Everything else is just kind of informational. Next up is date and time. You can change that from automatic if you want. You can change your language and if you've downloaded a different keyboard you'd like to use, you can do that. Now, the storage section actually lets you see how your 4.4 gigabytes is being used by different components and then ambient mode is probably better to do on the Google Home application but you can adjust a number of the settings here and actually test it out so you can change within the art gallery here you can see that I'm adjusting what kind of images are going to be available and then I can change a number of the settings like the weather and the time and the different information that is displayed on those photos plus whether or not I want want it to move you know every 10 seconds I can actually have a really fast slideshow here but again if you choose something like Google Photos they kind of want you to go into the Google Home application and honestly the interface is better there in most cases for you but when you do start ambient mode you can see that it does work and you'll get all the pictures you'd like the energy saver mode within the system section here allows you to adjust 
after inactivity, how long you want the display to remain on. We have these developer options. I'm not going to go through all of those, but that's because I turned that on with you in order to sideload. The ability to cast and to let others control your cast media is available as well and you can physically restart the device. Now the next section is remotes and accessories. So this is the ability to pair a number of Bluetooth devices. Today I'm just going to pair a PlayStation 4 controller and what you have to do is you hold the PlayStation button, the share button, and you hold that for a few seconds and it starts flashing at you and that means it's in pairing mode. And once it's in that, it's going to show up on the screen screen as a wireless controller. You can click on that with your existing remote and it will ask you whether or not you want to pair that. Go ahead and do that and after that my controller light turned blue and it was pairable and usable. Now you can disconnect, rename, or forget that and that would disconnect it forever basically if you forget. And then you can adjust the remote button. So these are your actual remote buttons. You can add something like a sound bar if you've done that later, or you can adjust how the different buttons work. Now, inside of the Google Home application, you're going to be able to find your Chromecast, and you can actually tap on Play Music to instantly start your mix on the default service, which is probably YouTube Music at this time. You'll see the little icon go. And when you go in, you get an ability to adjust the volume, hit the play button, or go to the next song. You can fast forward, or you can hit the stop casting button as well or at the bottom there's the cast my screen now there's additional settings inside of the app here and you can go ahead and rename your device change which home it is in adjust the room or the groups that it's in and when you go into the groups you actually have the ability to add it to speaker groups so you can see mine's in the living room speakers and you can add it to other groups or create a whole new group and so if you ask for music to play on that, you can get that to happen. Ambient mode, this is just like you saw on the TV, but the Google Photos option is available here. You can select multiple albums if you'd like and therefore get a whole different selection of pictures that you have available on Google Photos. The experimental option is also there for things like Facebook or Flickr. And then you can see all these other settings that you had before. Letting others control your cast media, you already saw that on the TV as well. It's the exact same there. Recognition and personalization are actually Google Assistant settings. So this gives you the ability to to allow personal results, redo your voice match if you want to, or actually remove that, which you'll see in a second here below. But group delay correction allows you to synchronize your speakers. So you might have a little bit of delay on other speakers, and therefore you would increase the delay on this to have it slow down and synchronize everything. Otherwise, you are now ready to go through and use this great Google Chromecast device, enjoy your content, play games, and do so much more. So go ahead, check out our full review of this device to make that final purchasing decision that's up on screen now. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and of course, don't hate, automate.